Welcome to Worship Tutorials Live. This just makes me so happy. Bradford, welcome to Birmingham, Thank you. Alabama. I feel it. Alabama. In my bones. <laughs> Bradford is visiting. Uh, this and was a very spur of the moment thing, and I'm just riding yeah. on. I just have so much adrenaline right now. <laughs> so, uh, Nick is not with us. Nick has been he he got the double whammy of the all the junk that's going around. I'm gonna lock so this. he got here this morning and helped us set things up for some content, and then uh, uh, Nick, if you're watching, hello. I hope you're feeling well. Bradford and I are winging this live stream together. Uh, spur of the moment, and this is the first time I've ever done it uh, from this location. So let us know if it sounds bad or looks bad. <laughs> as long as you can see it. Actually, don't us. because we don't believe you. We think we look awesome. <laughs> now I look, I look great. <laughs> you do look great, Brian. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't look great. Okay, you look great, Bradford. I like your flannel. <laughs> Thank you. You know I appreciate a good flannel. I like this. I like this shacket. It's if a you will. CPO shirt. That's what it is. <laughs> Howler Brothers. I like it. Mm, yeah, I'm trying to up my game. Keep up with this guy. Uh, so we were trying to do a video on these things. Yeah, we were gonna shoot a long form talking video. I couldn't wrap talking my head, head around it because I, it just seemed very. <laughs> these things being these things being the things in front of you. Amp us. in a box type pedals. Yes. Look, they're on the. They're on the. On the vid, on the vidya. Uh, we have an there, ACS that. one that is actually is that your house at my house. Yeah, but these basically represent all the options available. Mm -hmm. And there were so many directions we could take the video. I'm gonna pull up some comments here. Okay, and I was just like, well, why don't we just go live? Yeah, see what the people want to say, mm -hmm. and then we see if we can maybe get a more succinct video shot after we kind of because like. Man, even if we wanted to showcase, I can't find the video. <laughs> you, you're logged into the worship tutorials account and you can't find the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even if we wanted to showcase how each one of these sounded, continue. <laughs> you you can't listen to including ACS one. We can't show six things. Like you're not going to remember which one sounds like you want it to sound by there the time. Like you know, like you, the viewer, you're going to be like, oh man, I wanted to hear these, and it's just so. Thank Anyways, you. clearly we're live on the internet because people are talking to us. Yes. Okay. Exact them all. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I was preoccupied there because okay. I couldn't use my own technology. Well, it's not my technology. Sometimes yeah. that happens. So you're saying we? It's 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 hard for us to know where to go. Yeah. Right. And okay. and it's like even if we were to even if we were to do the compare them, mm -hmm. there are six things we would be comparing. And that doesn't include the Boss IR2. There's a lot more out that there. That doesn't include the simplifier. Mm -hmm. That is like, and it's just like, how do you know by the time you hear all of them which one sounds like yeah. the way you want it to sound? Yeah. So let's just talk. Yeah. We were, so if you have questions about these pedals, let us know. Uh, or any of the, we've played, we've used all of the UA effects amp sims. All mm -hmm. of them, all right? Mm -hmm. We've used ACS-1. Bradford, you have that. Iridium. My bad. Uh, I didn't bring it. But. Yeah. Uh, Stomp. I can run to my house real quick. Just go home and come on back. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Which one can replace my Mar 1972 Marshall cabs? Cabs? This one. Because it's in there. Just cabs? I have the thing for you. Continue, Bradford. <laughs> cabs to what? Marshall 72. Is, the is 1972 the type, not the year? I don't know. Could be. This one could replace those, potentially. That's... that's. Is Does this even belong in this topic of conversation? I guess it kind of can. It depends on... We have an ox stomp, by the way. It depends on how far down the rabbit hole you want to go, because... Yeah. It does a lot. Full stack. You know who else has a, a Marshall full stack and has made impulse responses based on it? We have at Worst Tutorials. I bought it a, a, su a Marshall Super 100, Jimmy, the Jimi Hendrix recreation that they did in the early 2000s. And it is a full stack with two 412 cabs, the oversized, you know, square cab and then the slant cab. <coughs> All of them have the UK made Celestian G12C speakers. It, it's. Chef's kiss. 
one of the greatest guitar experiences. Plugging into that amp, turning it up, playing a, a big E chord is uh, an, an experience all guitar players should have. We realize not many will, but all should. I, I said, because I played it last night. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We're talking about this massive. I mean, it's taller than it's me. It's over there. there oh, that's a deep drum. There it is. Uh, that th the thing is, when you put both cabs and the amp on top of each other, it's taller mm -hmm. than me. I'm trying to make it an adjustment to the microphone. Are you? It's a little close. Oh. It's a little too far this way. <laughs> I got it. Okay. I'm pushing it with my foot. <laughs> I, I personally think mm -hmm. playing that amp, that is the experience... Every guitar player wants, whether they realize it or not. I plugged into that. I was like, this is what I've always wanted to experience with guitar. Yeah. And, and I've never experienced it. The question is, can these give you that? The answer is emphatically no. 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 Because none of these are a 100-watt, meticulously made head Marshall That's its own thing. plexi head yeah. into a 412 cabinet. That's with those own thing. So, um, yeah, uh, there's a question here. Uh who, who asked? Um, Mickey B, super interested in the Boss IR2. We're actually super interested in that as well. And we tried to get one. We've asked around. We tried to get one They're all in stock. anticipation of making this content yeah. so we could at least have some experience with it. And, dude, they're, they're not in stock anywhere. Anywhere. So, and Boss, this, is, this isn't a dig at Boss. This is just real. Boss didn't ask us, so... No, they didn't. We don't have one. They didn't send us we're one. We're very curious. Uh, the question which we didn't dive into too inten intentionally to figure mm -hmm. out is, is do any of the, uh, what's the, the bigger one? The 1,000? The IR200. IR200, is that what they call it? Yeah. Is that the same thing? <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's what, yeah. if that's the same thing, it's just stereo. Mm -hmm. We could get a hold of one of those, which honestly would be more what we'd want to demo in <coughs> Excuse me. Because I need some water. Yeah, well, I, I already had a whole bottle. Go? It's gone. I drank it. Oh, you did? Yeah. <coughs> All right, I think I'm good. Which one of you right. would win in arm wrestling? Bradford. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you want to put some money on that? Yeah. No. Yeah, I'll put money on me losing. Okay. Do I? Do I win money if I lose? I'm gonna roll over. Well, is, is that how? Is that how some of those work? <laughs> like when you bet, if you yeah, call, I think as long so. as you call the right thing. So I guess what we can do, Bradford, is we can start taking these one at a time and just talk about our experiences with them sort of i'm thinking maybe we can talk about it's it's uh pro like what it does well and where maybe it doesn't do as well mm -hmm. compared to the others yeah where do you want to start let's take this out of this doesn't really fit that's a this. different thing yeah, it can, it, it, it's yeah. a i tell you what though you put this into this that is a combo yeah all right uh where do you want to start Start right here. The Strymon Iridium. Just because it's here. Yeah. And uh, well, let's talk about the the Walrus ACS one alongside of this. A little. Actually, they're different in in several ways. Strymon Iridium, Bradford, you have more experience with this than me. Yeah. We're not gonna go over specs. I mean, if like if you can go to Sweetwater and read about it, we're gonna try not to give too much of that information just away. Just not to be repetitive. Because it's just dull. yeah. Let's make this a little more interesting. Yeah. Um, it does two. First thing about this is it's stereo through, stereo in, stereo out. Not yes. all, not very many of these do that actually. Well, about half of them. Yeah. Depends on how so you look at it. yeah. Um, so it's stereo through, but it's. Uh, f drawback in that regard is that you can't choose different amps on each side. No. And some people would argue that the stereo thing is different because it's like not doing what amps actually do. Well, let me, ask, stereo. let me ask you a question then. Yeah. If you had, say you took the HX Stomp and you dialed in a stereo delay that ping-ponged, so dotted eighth on the, on the left... Quarter note on the right, uh, and you ran it into this thing. Would it give you dotted eight on the left and yeah. quarter on the right? Yeah. So how is it, so when you say it's not stereo, because it's like what does that mean? It is, but it's not giving you. From what I understand, it's not actually giving you two different amps. It's just like it's the same thing on both sides. It's like just pushing it through. Whereas mm -hmm. UA's claim is that it's yes. two separate instances it's of the two amp. Two Yeah. So, of the same amp. So the Lion, if you're going to run stereo, you're running the same exact thing. You can't change anything. Yeah. Whereas this, you can at least run two separate IRs. 
Yeah. On one on the on a separate IR on the oh. left and a separate one on the right. So, so it could that separate add some flavor. More. Yeah. Which, could this be found in the manual? Yes, but I don't think people know what it's a It's a power user. It's not, it's not a common thing. Yeah. So you can set it to be mono in or it'll summit, which is actually, which I really loved because when I was using this, I sometimes would have my board wired up. I don't know mm -hmm. why I'm trying to change this. Like that's necessary right now. Um, but I'd have my board wired up for stereo and sometimes I couldn't use stereo. So I hit mm. some and I could still keep my effects. Like if I kept uh, kept this all wired in and I wouldn't have to. It would still give you that quarter and dot and eighth. It would but just it would be just some down the middle. Yeah. Whereas if you only used mono or stereo, it would yeah, it'd only, only give you half one if you used stereo. Yeah. So yeah. So some people don't, didn't like that. And even though some people would like to use the same exact instance of an mm -hmm. amp, and they would dial things in identically, mm -hmm. it, just the way Strymon did the stereo imaging is not favorable to some people. Interesting. I, I did know. not know that. Yes. Yeah, I learned something. Yeah. Uh, now, would you say... Um, Nick is here. Hope, to, hope you will be here tomorrow too, Nick. Nick. We specifically did not go to Pizza Grace for lunch, Nick, because we're saving it for you, my friend. Yes. It's going to be awesome. Unless you have some place you want to go I'm more. buying. I'm going to say it. I'm going to... The so internet stoked. The internet bears witness to me. All right. <laughs> um, oh, look. It has a headphone out. It does. That's a nice touch. That is. Uh, so what would you... How would you describe the quality of the ant modeling? I think that's great. Okay. Um, when it came to this and the ACS this, one, this is one of the <clears throat> older offerings on the table. It is, depending on how you want to talk about these. Right, two. right. Mm -hmm. And even Tonex, because Tonex kind of existed in the IK world. Did it? Yeah. The the well, they had ant modeling. The that was within there, and it was like a very similar thing. Okay. That's a real deep, yeah, not important kind of thing. But these, it depends on how you want to talk about these two units, because. Uh, but I think the stomp came after the iridium, though, didn't mm -hmm. it? I'm pretty sure yeah. it did. Yeah, yeah. So I think so. I like like this more than at least how the ACS one was when it first came out. Mm. This was more like raw amp tone to me. Yeah. Um, and I I really do like it. I've never actually yeah. run two of them together, which is kind of cool. The idea seems kind of cool to me. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to try So that. you could get like it. the Vox model on one side and, and the Fender model on the other. Yeah, I'd probably actually be more likely to use the Marshall, the punch, mm -hmm. because I, I feel like the punch kind of has some characteristics of a Chieftain in a really distant kind of way. Yeah. But it would be a, like a way that if you're using the Vox here with maybe a more chimey IR and then the, mm -hmm. uh, ch the, the punch, you could almost emulate... Yeah. Like, it'd be different. We we could probably tone match. We've talked about doing it, but I think the Iridium's kind of not really been a favorable choice lately. There's a lot of other options. Yeah, for creating, like, IRs bespoke to this unit. I love yeah. using the word bespoke, by the way. It's, as long it's as you a nice... Use, it's a good As long one. as you don't say colorway, because... You don't like colorway? I don't know why it makes my skin crawl when people say, <laughs> you can get this dope Iridium in a black colorway. In a black colorway. colorway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, it's black. Ugh. I would like to get the Line 6 uh, DL4 Mark II in the black colorway. That's one thing I'd like. You know that one that they put out? The all black DL4 II? Oh, yes. Yeah. That was Rather than the green colorway. The color I'm sorry. I'm trying to trigger him. <laughs> I've succeeded. All right. So, so a few other things about the Iridium are clearly, you can see, it's by far the smallest thing on the table right like yeah the this is this is like smaller in a different way yeah i would say the iridium is smaller than well i don't know yeah they're kind of the same just dimensionally a little different the iridium is also really easy to power so it's like just a regular old pedal you know power supply for the iridium i like the when we talk of about it. the this and this this thing especially this is, is the biggest an absolute the nightmare to power this thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's it's very compact. It's easy to power. Um, I love... So, I'll talk about my... So, Bradford's used it more. We did a demo on this, like, years ago, right? When it came out, yeah. Yeah, and if you see us looking at our phones, by the way, uh, you we're probably the chat see that. Up. We've got... We want to engage with you, so we're looking for comments, things, questions that we can answer, and things yeah. like that. We're not... We're not trying to ignore you. We're actually trying to engage. Yes. To be more present in the moment, if you will. 
Um, <clears throat> so uh, one thing about this, Bradford, I'm pretty sure, yes, you can kind of see what's on the screens of our phones on this video. Yeah. So mine's in dark mode, so you can't. So I'm say that to. <laughs> I'm gonna put mine in. Do not. I'm gonna go D and D. Do not disturb me. Uh, in case I get you know something that I don't want the internet to see. So a few people keep. I've seen a few questions asking why certain things aren't here. What are those things? Well, ACS one. It's at Bradford's it's house. At my house. Yeah. But this isn't like some. We don't have everything. <laughs> I mean. I don't know. I just like just it just don't go don't get your undies in a knot because there's something here that you like and we don't. It's just yeah. we have we just wanted to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, and we have experience with a few more things that are not on the. Somebody table. said people don't have enough money to buy two iridiums, and that's true. I would well, absolutely one agree. Good. However, that hasn't stopped people because I've seen I've seen <laughs> that other people lots do. of people doing it. It's yeah. cheaper to run two iridiums than it is to run two UA pedals. How much does an iridium cost? I think they may be four hundred actually, but they're the three ninety nine. Three ninety nine, but they're they've been out longer and their their mm -hmm. value has dropped more in the used market than this kind of thing. Yeah. So I so when we when we did the demo of the iridium, which you can find at Worst Tutorials here on the YouTube's. Um, I just never got along with this pedal. I don't know why. I love it. I might, and I, you know what? It would be worth me trying this again because I have started using a pedal board more into devices. And throughout this video, we will talk to you. Bradford and I will share with you sort of what our preferences are for running a board with these kind of pedals. Um, because that's what these are allowing people to do. People, we feel like a lot of people are moving from all-in-one units like the Helix to hybrid units or hybrid boards like pedals with something like this because yeah. pedals are fun yeah. and if you love pedals you should play pedals yeah um yeah i just never got along with this thing for some reason i don't know why which is never my favorite thing well we've been and i say we because <clears throat> brian says we but brian has like tweaked our i our our ir process a little bit i would love to try some of the new irs with this yeah and I think now there's just so many options. It's like, yeah. that's one reason why we wanted to do a video in this faint period. It's like, nobody, we don't e we didn't even buy all of these. No. Like, we like we we work with these companies and mm -hmm. they send them to us so we can offer things to you guys and we can turn around and make product for it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, I wouldn't be buying all of these things. No. So, and like, you know, I don't, I don't don't think it's like a big secret that a youtube channel offers I would own this what's that i would own this i don't think it's a big secret that like a youtube channel like ours who makes content has companies reaching out like that's that's business that's what they happens. actually come out on top because you know if we may be so bold we they don't offer pay them us. we offer them a wide exposure and convert people to for them so we don't get, we've never done anything yeah. paid, really. We just like, no, if we you don't, let us don't. keep the thing. Strymon Line 6, Kemp, none of these companies. Well, I bought the Kemper Profiler player. I bought mine too. Uh, Kemper, don't, they don't care Full about price, us. no discount. No, uh, they don't care about us. No. So. <laughs> Is the feeling mutual? Well, you have to stay tuned to find out. All right, what do you want to move on, Bradford, to something else? Yeah. Um, I was looking at some things. Let's talk. Let's talk next. We'll just go. We'll just go like this. So next, we're going to talk about the UA amp pedals. Okay. But do you have a question that would be good to answer in the meantime? Well, we're talking about this, and people are asking questions not directly related. So okay. We, I don't. I'm like. Okay. So best uh, boss IR two best amp in a box. We addressed that earlier. We just we don't. Been able we've to never one. been able to play it yet. So. Yeah. So there's that. We would love to. Uh, Boss didn't reach out to us. So. And we, we also don't, we've made it a point not to give opinions, whether they're speculation or whatever, on things that we haven't tried. Yeah. So. No, I'm not. I mean, it looks like it'd be a viable option. It looks based. cool. I mean, it looks really cool. Yeah. So. I mean, I can't. I'd love to try it. The, uh, the footprint, being the boss footprint. Very nice. You can mm -hmm. load your own oh, IRs. It, it would be the smallest from, thing. From from looking sure. at the the things you can do with the IR two. Yeah. Those Looks are cool. those are that's information I can give you based on what I read. <laughs> you can go to that is water. true. Yeah. Or Zounds or anyone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's talk about the UA amp pedals. You know what? I have not yet played this one and I'm very much looking forward to it. It's very good. Because I've 
I've experienced the greatest Marshall sound in the world in that that GH100 Super 100. I wish I could thing. like Bluetooth my phone video to the <laughs> switcher so I could Gosh. quickly cut over so they could see it this was, thing. You probably can. Uh, if I knew how to use Ecamm Live a little better, I bet you could do that. Um, anyway, uh, I'm kind of really getting into Marshall tones, uh, and so I'm anxious to try this. But our our takeaway with the UA amp pedals, so we've tried all of them. We've tried the Ruby, the Dream. What's the tweed called? Uh, Woodrow. The Woodrow. It's right back there. I can see it. Maybe I want to plug too, that thing back in again. But it's yeah, because. Okay, so we have a Tweed Deluxe amp, and we've sort of like learned how to dial it in a little better based on using the real amp. So anyway, uh, and now the Lion. So all four, and our takeaway is um, they are the most like owning, like using this, especially the the um, the AC thirty one. What's it called? The Ruby. Yep. Because I have. A, Vo a 64 Vox AC30 top boost. I have the amp that the Ruby's based on. And use has a whole lot more volume coming at you. So um, these things are like owning and using the real amps. And they sound amazing, like the real amps and cams. It is. And people uh, have said, th and I, I, I haven't tried like everything back to back and whatever i yeah. think the biggest well first off just the we biggest should take tip. that video by the way <laughs> <laughs> take the ruby and record it like run it and to, to the 64 and in the 64 okay i'm down that's what i mean i'm yeah. down the 64 i thought it, you were saying the comparing actual, ac30 <laughs> no no the actual ac30 <laughs> the actual 64 ac30 versus the ruby i want to do that now see you later bye guys i'm not <laughs> we'll do that yeah i think so i've seen that's people say happen. they're like it's just, it doesn't have headroom. It doesn't take pedals where it gets all fizzy. And I'm like, what yeah, you're it describing, sounds like the amp. <laughs> what you're describing is an amp that is being fed too much gain. Yeah. Or, or what you're describing is a actual Vox, a 64 Vox, which not, yeah. this isn't a flex. It's, it's more of a, as a matter of fact, like, have you, has, have you played a 64 Vox? <laughs> yes, because, I have. Because, so like, yeah. The top boost circuit, brilliant circuit, whatever, mm -hmm. is what gives it that more like it's chiming so, goodness. It's like it will cut your head off. Though. It is. Gosh, it's bright. Yeah. Yeah. And now the normal channel is what Brian May used. And, and there's a reason. Yeah. And we know why he used treble boosters because right. I yes. think most people are like a Vox with a treble booster. How's he get that? The normal channel. Normal is channel's dark. Duffy. Yeah, it's dark. So he cranked until them. you turn it way up. Yeah, and, and then, then it still, opens up. He still yeah. wanted more, but that makes way more sense. So the yeah. sixty, the sixty four, every time you use something, you need to be right back. You need to scrap the idea of how you used your pedals beforehand, and you need to figure out how that unit takes them because since we're talking about, I it. actually love, I love this thing, and even with even with its the stock IRs, I did. So yeah, there well, it is. So another thing about this, the oh, this is based on a sixty-three. I thought it was different. Nah, I thought, right. but but it's not. So be here's the thing about this though: the uh, the bass and the treble on this pedal are cuts. So if you turn the treble up, it removes treble from That's the how circuit. The amp is. That's how at least my sixty-four AC thirty it run it works that way. You turn the treble up on the top boost circuit, and it gets dark. You turn the bass up on the top boost circuit and it gets thin. If you turn it down, it gets full of bass. So even those controls, the they're essentially backwards, uh, are like the real amp. So yeah, okay. So these pedals are also stereo through, and like Bradford mentioned earlier, um, and UA has confirmed this with us, it's two separate instances of the amp. So they're going to react a little differently. Maybe. Um, you know, depending on how the effects feed I mean, through and all that. You can't dial them in differently. No. And you can't choose different cabs on each side. Unless I think some of the artist presets are pre-baked in with different mics on each side or something like that. Okay. But it's like if you run the, the, if you run the top boost, if you run the brilliant channel with the silver cab, and you have it set like this, whatever this is. Like both sides are set exactly like that, but you know it's it, they're reacting separately. 
Right. Separately which is different is than which is different than ACS. I'll say at least it's different Iridium, than the way they 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 phrase it. It seems like it'd be different. Yeah. Which is a reason why people weren't happy with this because even if people were running wanted to run two AC thirties, I've I saw people who still wanted to have two of these to do it. Really? It wasn't it wasn't just the fact that they wanted to run like an American and a mm. British on ones. Like they were like yeah. still wanted them separate. Interesting. Okay. Cool. So, um, you know, another thing about these is they're they're easy to power and they're well, they take a little more juice than I think the iridium. The, right? the milliamps the, amperage. The cables in the back are kind of like that's kind of tough to deal with. They're kind of close together. Yeah. Oh, the the jacks. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and, and another thing, this isn't the dream, but like the Ruby and the Dream, for example, are out of phase with one another. Yeah. Just like a Vox AC30 and a Fender Deluxe Reverb, those two amps are out of phase with one another in the real world. So they've modeled these things. That, that's, that's crazy. That's Universal Audio. Though. Isn't it? Isn't it just one of the speaker or one of the channels or something? But it's the one everybody wants to yeah, use. Yeah, it's any, the brilliant. Channel. Like the normal, it's not. But nobody really uses the normal. I think that's right. Normal, so. I think that's true. Um, so it's just like if you put mics on the actual amps, that's what you're dealing with. So a lot of people will choose to run the Ruby and the Dr the Druby setup, but then get like a Deso or something to, or the, you know, the Walrus version. And that to, could be a to full flip phase. Anyway, that could be a whole other discussion because to me, that's yeah. a lot of money to. That's to, a lot. To go all in just to get two different amp sounds just to be buried in and a is, and is <laughs> Just to be not heard by anybody. <laughs> and do those two different amp sounds, is that really, is, 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 does that matter that much? We, maybe, maybe. I will say, though, I like the idea of plugging in. I would say that's more true stereo to me. That, that there's something about yeah. running two separate pedals. You get a lot more separation. Than running, like, different. two, even if I ran two rubies, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's UA amp pedals. They're really cool. If and especially if you like UA's vibe as a company, like just completely authentic to the actual real world hardware, almost to a fault. Some could say, you know, by not giving people the option to flip phase. And, and I like love, I love the dream. I think I don't know. People don't. I'm not really into. I'll, actually, let's just make these two kind of don't count to me because they're a little different. Mm -hmm. So, like, in terms of, like, amp pedals. Well, they're, yeah. I'm not really into, I don't really utilize amp pedals. You don't. I don't. You're more of a capture I'm not, profile. yeah, I don't know what it is. It just doesn't. Player. I just does, it's not something, I have no idea. Because, like, I like Tonex. Yeah. Um, I actually haven't even, I have one of these. I haven't even plugged it in yet. Well, we're going to make a video about that. And. Bradford plugging this thing in. Yeah. For the first time. Click. Done. Thanks for but, watching. I don't really know why, but anyways. Yeah. Um. All right, so let's talk. Unless Bradford or if you've got some questions, we can we can answer. We'll move on to the HX Stomp, the beloved HX Stomp. I've for for a long time now wanted, and this still may happen, wanted to make a video titled "This is the greatest pedal ever made, all time, full stop, greatest pedal ever made." It's probably. <laughs> I, I think I'd even. That's have a clickbait headline. I'd have a hard time because it's the most well-rounded pedal it's not massive it yeah. does great at all things it's not the best at all things it's yes it's but it great does at great all at all things and i don't really think there's really much of it. there's no contender no Nobody, well okay no. there is but we haven't tried it i don't know if it's a contender but i think the boss gt 1000 core it's got potential. Is a contender. A potential contender because it's about the same size and it does kind of the same type However, of However, I'd argue if it was a contender, I think we'd know. Okay. I'm not I'm not saying We've tried okay, so I'm we, not I'm not dumping have, on it. It's not like we've never played the boss modeling. Because we had a GT one thousand for a while and we tried it and we built some stuff with it and uh, we, we we got to know it. It was it just wasn't yeah, I don't know. It didn't sound as good as this to us. We'll just say that. So that's what I'm saying. Like if, if that makes it not necessarily not, a contender, in our opinion. I'm just well. I'm just saying, like, if it's something that is is worth talking about, mm -hmm. we would we'd be seeing it everywhere and hearing about it. And that's not to discredit what people like who use it think mm -hmm. about it. But I'm just saying, like, Helix Helix far and away surpasses all of our product sales. 
Yeah. And we did, because I was I was chatting with somebody today, and they were asking about if we do presets for the boss, one of the things. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, we like dove into Head Rush. Yeah, we did. Because we people, people were like, huge community, and like, nada. <laughs> well, not nada, but it's just, not a lot of. The numbers... <laughs> Yeah, the numbers don't lie. So we were like, okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the 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 HX stomp. I mean, a lot has been said about this pedal, and like Bradford said, as far as like, if you look at our sales at Worst Tutorial, if you don't know Worst Tutorial sells captures and presets and and things for all these different. Well, we don't sell stuff for these, but we sell stuff for all of this. Um, Indirectly, you could yeah, you can put IRs, IRs in any of these. Um. But like line six HX sales are ten X everything else. And and we have much longer history with line six making stuff for line six. Um so uh the ant modeling. So uh, some I saw a comment in here or it just flew by when we were talking about Iridium and they were like, Iridium is true stereo, the one that's fake stereo is the stomp, and I thought to myself, This person needs Huh to read read the manual maybe or what does that mean i don't know this thing is absolutely true full-on stereo uh yeah i just thought i'd address that quickly um so i don't mean to be <laughs> that was kind of rude this person needs to read the manual i don't know if you've used this in a way that is true stereo is what i'm trying to say uh but it is so you can run of course the hx stomp gives you access to all of the hx effects modeling everything that's in the helix hx family which is really good and super like diverse you can get there's everything in there um delays reverbs overdrives modulation pitch all that is in there you can do polyphonic pitch with this thing uh so you at for the topic of this video we're talking about amp in a box pedals right um this thing will do <laughs> We'll do uh, multiple amp blocks, so you can have two amps in stereo uh, with different, you know, you can use line sixes stock cabs, which are actually really good uh, based on the new uh, effects, the cab engine that they introduced. And um, you can load your own IRs. We are doing, you know, the tone match IRs for the line six products, which this includes. Um, and we've just started releasing the new Tone Match Gen 2 uh, IRs patches for these. And it's like, it sounds better than I've ever heard it sound before. Yeah. And it is so close to, like, take for example the Chieftain. Like, Bradford and I went through a bunch of the, the, the Gen 2 update patches that we're about to start pushing out. And the Chieftain was just, we both were like, whoa, that sounds good. The yeah. new version of it's it. Got, right? It's got some extra mojo in it. Gosh. I so, played the original first. I was like, that sounds awesome. That's pretty good. And then you play the new one. I'm and like, it's whoa. like, that's like plugging into the actual matchless Chieftain, which is over there. <laughs> I got to do that in every video. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's getting to the point, especially with these new IRs and stuff, where... This, running through this versus running through an amp with a mic on a cab, it's very difficult to hear the difference. Same, same with these, you know, that's the point we're trying to make. Um, so the amp modeling, I think it's great. It's old. Like it's, as far as amp modeling goes, the modeling technology, it's these two right here are probably the oldest, right? Which is kind of wild. Yeah, the, the Kemper and the Line 6 modeling is the oldest. So, um... It's really good. What I think sets this pedal apart is is like you can run two amps, two IRs, plus like three other effects of your choosing. You can't do polyphonic pitch on top of that, but you could run a reverb, you could run an overdrive in here, and like the we did a video when um, the new firmware came out recently, 3.7, and the Nobles ODR1, and when I compared the model of the nobles to the actual nobles rdr1 which is back there okay it's you can see it it's the green thing on the top left for you uh and it's like i couldn't hear the difference in the model versus the actual pedal so um the the effects modeling in here is is as authentic as anything yeah except for maybe fractal because i'm a i'm a fractal fanboy through and through Fractal isn't represented on this table. I saw Jason Biggs in the comment section. Jason, 
You and me. We're fractal beds. Somebody, we're fractal people. Somebody asked, and I addressed it just so we could keep moving. But, yeah. Um, if we thought, I guess the question was if fractal would basically make something like this. Sign me up. But I doubt it. The closest thing they have is the FM3. And that's I not even close. I can grab it, but it's like... Freaking It's massive. big. <laughs> it's like... It's like as big as an HX effects. It's about like this. It's like the size of an HX effects, and these, it's heavy. It's about like these four together. Yeah. it's. I mean, you could build a board around it with external effects. You could, there were people when it first came yeah. out doing it, but what they were doing, and they didn't know it, was just like basically making... Even though did the stomp come before that, I think, right? Yeah. I'm trying to... It's really hard to remember. Sometimes. Yeah. It's but it's just like, it's funny to see people who have gone back... Mm -hmm. And maybe not gone back as in like they had a stomp, sold it, and now have another one again. But it's mm -hmm. like people have like realized that the stomp is amazing. I feel like the stomp in the last two, three years, people awesome. have like really accepted the stomp as a unit. For a while, people are like, oh, it's good. Yeah. But I, people grabbed these and and then for whatever reason, I've seen people grab these and then go to this. I've seen a few so, people. It's very interesting. I want to give – and Nick, if you're still watching, Nick and I experienced this together. Um when we were filming in this right over here in the room, we made the tone match presets for the matchless uh, lightning, your matchless lightning. Yeah. And the that was one of the very first tone match Gen Two patches that we made. Uh, it started with the Badger, which came right before the lightning, and then we did the lightning. And so Nick and I were were doing the demo, and we kind of both thought together, like you know, a lot of people are using. HX, because all we ever really demo for the HX stuff is the Helix. Like, we'll just demo the Helix patches, right? And we thought, let's load up, let's run the pedal board, my big pedal board, through the HX stomp, just to give people an, an idea of how to, how, what does the stomp patch sound like? Because that's, you know, available. And we loaded up the, uh, the, light, the match light patch, the 97 match light patch, ran the board through it, and both of us were just like, this is one of the coolest, like, it was, it sounded so good. And, um, you know, in the pedal board I have, it's, it's an indulgence of a pedal board. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, even then, it, best pedals fall apart into a crappy amp. Yeah. So. It's, it's an overkill board, right? But it was, man, it was so much fun, and it sounded so good. And uh, it really impressed impressed me to be honest with you i mean the helix patch sounds great and we demoed that and we thought it sounded great but then we put the board into the stomp it was just like yeah sign me up take this with me sunday morning and i'm good to go did you say this i've been looking at comments did you mention that the lightning is basically gen 2 the lightning is a is a tone match gen 2 patch we, it has a the last several so, patches have been yeah and the if you're if okay so if you're following along with the tone match gen 2 thing since the badger it's been Gen 2. All like it's been Gen 2. The last original tone match patch was the uh, was the Lone Star. And so um, the Badger and the Lightning and some of the others have a TM plus. So if it says TM plus, like if the actual IR says TM plus, that's Gen 2. Yeah. It's just we didn't have a name for it. We we wanted to like make it more clear mm -hmm. what the plus meant because we also yeah. say drive plus and we didn't want it to be kind of like i asked <laughs> yeah right and i asked nick i was like what do you think about calling it tm plus and he goes honestly i don't like it <laughs> i kind of <laughs> like funny. it but it's it's a little confusing <laughs> but it, he had he had some really good points about like yeah why it should be something else um somebody asked so, or said they were excited for the fender ant pack and the edge artist pack gen 2 okay bear or bad news here not everything will become Gen Two, but that one probably will be. Don't well see. I you're, 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 I'm uh, writing checks that my body can't cash. We <laughs> the mouth. problem we have faced with adding units, which is why yeah. we are like we've asked. We're pretty choosy about what unit mm -hmm. we add. Tonex, we we did good. We mm -hmm. chose a good product to jump onto. Headrush Prime. Not so much. If you're a Headrush Prime user, um, we're no not. Slight. We're not. We think the unit is really cool. We're not good. dissing on it. It's just we have to. We have to pick and choose because it takes a lot of time to yeah. do these things. And when we so. like with Tonex, we're still trying to backlog. Yeah. And even Quad Cortex. 
Yeah. We're still trying to add things that are available that we know that people older, want. Yeah. And some things aren't going to happen. There's some awesome, like the the third power Dreamweaver has been sitting in the room back there, and I've just been wanting to get to it. But it's just like we know, yeah. like the the Dreamweaver. The reason why it's not There's a priority so much is it. that we just know that's not like a high and it's not yeah the third power amp, so. yeah third power stuff is awesome, but it's not as well known. I think maybe. Anyway, <clears throat> HX Stomp. We could talk awesome, about that for a while. Awesome unit. It now a couple things about it is um, it has a it has a stereo effects loop built into it, which is great. It has a headphone out built into it, which is great. So if this sits at the end of your chain for for amps, you know, like you can run you can run out to a, to a you know a console or a you know a board where you can play at home silently with the headphone out. Um, it's great. You can run an effects loop through it, so you can run like. You know, you can put your wet effects after the amp block and still have this at the end of your chain and use the headphone out, which is nice. Uh, you can I've, plug in expression pedals to control parameters. You can. Gosh, it's, it's me, good. I made a board where I... <clears throat> did I use the LCAP for delay? I think I did. Yeah. Um, what else? I ran a drive. I ran into the drive first yeah. and then actually ran into that. Yep. And used it for trem and pitch okay and chorus mm -hmm. and then went out into because i started the stereo path with the chorus ah stereo out into the el capistan mm -hmm. into the big sky mercury x stereo back into the no big deal the stomp yeah. which i then used for stereo amps that's amazing so and it was the it was the gen to c30 go oh, that one's yeah, and I that, that was, was a, the one I sent you because yeah. I'm like Bradford, you have to try this on the stomp. It was the first time I felt like when I was playing, I wasn't playing the stomp just like because there's something about the stomp. I love Helix in its own ecosystem, mm -hmm. but I don't like adding pedals to it. I like like other effects, but drives. Yeah. I always felt that like the yeah. drives were better to use in the amps with yeah. the amps of the in the line six line six ecosystem sound better with the drives within the. If that makes sense. Yeah. But now I really like the way whatever it's like doing that's a little extra. I couldn't really explain it because it's like it sounds good on its own within like the Helix patch, but they sound really great taking pedals. Sound even better to me. So, yeah. And that was what Nick and I experienced with the board. It was just like, this is, I've never heard it sound this good. Okay. That's H check Stomp. It, it can be a little difficult to power because I think this is like a different plug. Even it is. Yeah. Than your typical power, uh, typical pedal power board or power power supply and it takes a lot of amps it takes three amps to power this thing which is more than what most even like the high amperage outputs are not quite that much yeah um okay the new kid on the block that's actually the old kid on the block the kemper profiler player yeah this one's kind of weird to me <laughs> kemper finally made the thing that we all wanted uh i have played this on a board we actually uploaded a video where, where i was playing it with a board and it felt and sounded great so good yeah kemper bradford you have way more experience with kemper than i do because back in the day it was your go-to unit right to run a pedal board into right yeah was i ran not? i ran two of them you ran two kempers with a stereo board into them yeah um i loved it so i guess what we can do is we can talk a little bit about let's let's have a brief discussion on how does the kemper Ma or capture tech stand up to like the new stuff like Tonex or Quad Cortex. I well, I t that's interesting because it's like what what is maybe the way the unit plays the captures, yeah, or profiles. What's what is the bigger culprit of what I hear? Mm -hmm. Is it just the unit itself is like doing something to or it, or the hardware that's the hardware, that's or is it, it like is yeah. it actually the way the capture profile mm -hmm. is made? Um, because like, it would just be, there's this, this way, this it seems weird to say that a digital unit is compressing. I don't know why that sounds weird to me, but it feels weird to it's suggest. It's what it does. It feels weird to suggest that. I don't know why. There is, com there is a compression <laughs> with all of the profiles yeah. that I think feels really good. It's, I like, I but like it. does it have a Kemper. drawback, right? Yeah. But when I was like feeding wet effects into the front of them, like I would with amps. 
to me, the idea of what effects after just is not very appealing. Well, it's it, not the it sound you sound like. bad. It's it a sound. sound bad. I, yeah. I just don't. It's just not what I want to. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go out of my way to make that happen because I like them into the front. But with the Kemper, it was kind of like your trails just would like they would kind of dip, but it was like a more. It was like they were being compressed. Yeah. Whereas, it, so like, and, it, and then it would just quickly drop off. Ah. It was like stop, basically, because your like decay a, would end, and so just, it wasn't a natural thing. Yeah. like the actual amp would do. Quad Cortex was better, and then yeah. Tonex is even better than that to me. Um, just with taking wet effects, and honestly, like where I, the church I play at, we sometimes I'm the only guitar player, mm-hmm. and so my which I love I, the my job isn't to play a song like the record me me and mm-hmm. the the rest of the guys i play with i play with the same few dudes pretty regularly yeah our bass player steve is on our version of goodness of god which you should check that out that was a lot of fun on steve, the channel steve's very good yeah look up the goodness of god wt music yeah. version or whatever um and then we got a guy and watch the bass player jeremy james who actually yeah. tours with mr Talkbox, which is kind of cool uh and then we got a guy named chris crowder the the chris is on drums and chris is like a monster musician why am I bringing up? This is not directly the point. I'm just really honored to be on a team with people like that. They're insane, and I want to give them props. They're mm-hmm. great people. Um, but, like, we'll just change stuff in the moment. And so I'm regularly changing my presets. Like, I'm regularly like, okay, you know what? Today kind of feels like I need less verb because I need yeah. to, like, dry it up. And I'm not a gospel player at all. Mm-hmm. But those guys are way more in tune with gospel chops than I am. Like, you know, Jeremy and Chris, that's where they grew up. So, like, if they're feeling it that day, I like, I need to change what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So... Anyways, I don't remember why I was bringing this up. I think I was just talking about the fact that I don't always have to play with lots of wet effects. Yeah. yeah it's a little that's different. I don't, and so yeah. it's, I don't know, but Quad Cortex is what I use. Yeah, we'll, and we'll get there too. What what Bradford and I choose to play based on like if we're running pedals. This is just so weird to me. It's heavy. I like it. It's I'll say this. Big. I like it. And I still... And I put it on the Tonex board that we use in all of our demos for Tonex. I just took Tonex off, put this here, and I ran the Telstar capture or profiles through it because we redid the Telstar profiles. No, we didn't redo them. They were the ones that we did ori- originally. We redid the Telstar presets, the tone, matches, yeah. the tone match presets. It's a Gen two patch now, and we gave it away for free. I forgot to turn the freebie off, so last night I'm laying in bed and I'm like. I forgot I was going to turn off the We free. talked about that a few times. So it's not free anymore. So if you missed it, you had like 12 emails about it. So, <laughs> sorry. You can pay for it. It's $15. It's worth it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I thought this thing sounded great. It gave me that really nice feel under the fingers, you know, that Kemper does, that compression thing. Um, and I had wet effects after this. Yeah. That's how I was running it. So I didn't experience that thing where it compressed them like that and it took drives really great like kemper kemper has always sounded awesome to me yeah it's never kemper has never existed in a form factor that i wanted to play on sunday I'll say i that. i didn't like kemper's performances this I would. yeah sound great to me yeah when you can dial on performance i don't like utilizing their particular rules for like if you change certain parameters it cuts Wet yeah. effects. And it's not even just like, it's like, I mean, it's dry. Yeah. And so it's kind of frustrating because, like, I've programmed songs before. Uh, and, like, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, I changed something and I forgot. And then I realized that, like, I put, like, a delay in the X block and X block and then started changing something later on, mm-hmm. which just really messed up my delay repeats. Yeah. And it's kind of a pain. And it's it not the delay block. Out. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Kemper Profiler Player, it's expensive. Is it the most expensive thing here? I think it and Stomp are about the same price. Isn't actually, it's a fifty. Actually, it's a dollar cheaper than the Stomp, if I recall. If I watched, if the Tone Junkie video I watched about this, if I recall, recollectly, uh, that's six ninety nine, and this is six ninety eight. I think that's what is they it did. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what Kemper did. <laughs> Come on. 
Six ninety eight. <laughs> is that for real? That is for real. They really said we want to come in under the song. I don't know. That sounds like something Jonathan would suspect, though. <laughs> yeah, that's what Jonathan said. Jonathan, Jonathan. Hi, loves, Jonathan. If you watch the, this, that sounds like a Jonathan. I don't thing. assume he's this far into this video. No. Um. <laughs> Hello there. Hello there. I have a double. Neck What's guitar. up, dudes? <laughs> yeah, I have. A, yeah. yeah. Is it too he weird had, to play has, that in church? He has two double neck guitars. I know. He went crazy, man. I love it. Um. Yeah. So. It really is. This the, is the, the most expensive is unit on the table. <laughs> by a dollar. And this one is cheaper by $1. Yeah. So um, now the question is, this thing does, uh, these are really the only two that do a lot of external effects. Because this will do the amp profile. That only does one amp. One amp. Only one amp. It's mono in and stereo out if you want to use the quarter inch outs. Mono in, quarter inch stereo out, or mono XLR out. Sorry, there you can see it. So it's one amp model, but then you've got four effects slots in this thing. Uh, you don't have access to all of the Kemper effects. They neutered it a little bit. So you, and uh, like some of the new reverbs, you can't access. You can't access Kemper Drive or Kemper Fuzz. Um, you know, they have some of the older drive models, like the OCD, the, tu the Tube Screamer. What are the old amp? Uh, drive. There's some boosts that you have access yeah, I don't to. I what they call all these. They sound great to me because we use them in our performances that that are available. Um, so this thing, like this one, will do external effects. You have you don't have near the flexibility that you have with this as far as signal chain routing goes, but it's laid out in a way that I think most guitar players would utilize. You can do drives, modulations, reverbs, delays. All that in here, as well as an amp profile one mm -hmm. in mono. So um, it's cool, and it, and you set it up. You can be it's pretty flexible in how you can set it up and move through your different. You know these buttons can do whatever you want them to do, which is nice. We'll do a longer video on the profiler player. I think it'd be worth doing, yeah. um, like a longer review demo. But it's. If you're my, if it didn't weigh thirty pounds, I would have brought mine. It's expensive. I was, I was afraid it's heavy it was gonna and expensive. Tip my checked bag over the weight. And seriously, it is not fun to power. It needs twenty four watts. So that's a how lot. does that translate? Because it tra how does it translate? Like I looked it to up. Milliamps. You have to basically. You know how you can daisy chain multiple outputs together. You have to do like three. Yeah. So um, depending on the power supply now. Uh, so it's not fun to power. Uh, I just plugged it into the wall. <laughs> Somebody I posted that and was like, how are you powering that? Well, I took into the power the supply wall. that they gave me and I plugged it into the wall and plugged it into the thing. So um, that's Kemper Profiler Player. I think if you're really invested in the Kemper you know, ecosystem, it's, it's a great option for you. Uh, and that said, too, one of its strengths is just the sheer number of profiles that are available from people like Tone Junkie, Michael Britt, Worship Tutorials, you know, we have a lot of them. So there's a lot of options for you for amps out there. Uh, Brendan, right? Mm -hmm. From Sunday Tone. Hey! He does he does some of our collab stuff. With yeah. Us. You should make sure you follow him on Instagram for sure. Yeah. Uh, he said, how do you feel about the DLC upgrades? I think that's, I don't know. Well, okay, so it's only speculative. So what he's talking about is... Is, is DLC literally downloadable Downloadable content? content, yeah. So they say... It's the video never, game. Yeah, it's the... Term. It's, a, uh, yeah. it's like if you if you have, if you you have play Fallout 4, you can get a DLC for Fallout 4. It gives you more stuff. All right. Yeah. Anyway, I'm a Fallout fan from back in the day. Uh, I was too. I loved it, man. Uh, so Christoph, who, who is Christoph Kemper, who started Kemper commented on Kemper's forum saying the reason that morph like for example morphing is not available in this pedal the reason that it doesn't have morphing it doesn't have all of the effects available is or one of the reasons they didn't want to bring a product to market that was that was capable of 70 percent of what the stage is capable of but priced at half can could I just would really like to hear people just, say can you agree that that's not fair to Kemper 
to expect them to make yeah. a unit. Canon's been doing that forever with their cameras, by the way. You've told me. Yeah, I remember like yeah. how like one camera is like almost exactly the same minus like... They just cripple it on purpose. Yeah. And they, the Canon cripple hammer is a term that is widely used. But it's like, it's like if you really I want understand to temper, it. yeah. it's like you got to be like, does it suck? It sucks. But like, yes. let's like. Can you honestly tell me you think it'd be fair to Kemper if they were to? Because then they'd be like, shooting themselves in the leg. Like you can yeah. do most of what you can do with the stage with this little box. That costs half as much. Honestly, I think. But that's the other thing. They kind of priced themselves in a weird way at the beginning because mm. now what if this only did profiles? And that's that's it. it. No effects. Anything. I else. think there are people who'd be totally fine with that. Probably myself included. How much would you expect this thing to go for? Three hundred dollars. You know there to, are people yeah. like me who have two Kemper racks. Yeah, you that do. I bought two Kemper racks. Yeah, you still have run, them both, right? I do. I'm gonna have yeah. to sell one of them to do <laughs> to do what this thing does now. Yeah, like I, I'm, I may have a hard time selling that. I may have to take a big. You're gonna lose. Yeah, because there are people. There are the people, prices are. C- probably going to come down yeah yeah and it's i don't know it's just an interesting thing yeah so yeah uh, well and and then what christoph said in the post is they might consider letting people purchase the ability to unlock new effects or morphing or maybe this thing could profile currently this cannot profile and i wonder i wonder if it but the stage can i wonder if the internals could support it i think that's the speculation is from but based they on just what he didn't said. put it. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So who knows? So how do I feel about that? I don't know. Eventide has been doing that forever. Because you H9. buy an, you buy an H nine core, and then but those aren't made anymore, right? Yeah, I think you can only get a max. Eventide did it for a long time. Then they did. So you'd have to purchase new al- other algorithms if you wanted to use them. But the pedal was capable of all of it. Can you imagine being one of those people who bought all these algorithms and didn't buy enough to make it a max? But now you can't buy anymore. Maybe you can. <laughs> I think you probably unlock them. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure Eventide would take your money and let you have an algorithm on That's your on your old core. But so Eventide's been doing it. Other companies do it, but companies like Line Six and Fractal have sort of set this standard that they're gonna can they're gonna give you all of this future uh, content uh, via firmware that gives you new amp models new drive new effects models all for free so i don't know i if, if kemper wants to charge that's that's their prerogative they can do that it's fine i don't care i guess the, we'll know soon once you know as this, as things kind of like settle if they made a good call because as it the market will dictate as i was say was, it has nothing to do with kemper yeah because the customers us we will yep. dictate if something is successful the dumbest yep. the dumbest thing okay example yeah you know those stanley cups yeah that ever everybody and the largely big, women i have well one. that's the stereotype that is but that right. well like the the cups now are like women typically have them <laughs> yeah that's kind of the thing those stanley was about to discontinue them really and like these two women on instagram my yeah. wife told me about this because that's why her she found out about mm-hmm. it. like before they like they were popular, but they were like before they blew up like they are now. Yeah. These two men on Instagram found them and were started using them and told it like their followers because I think I think it's a, an account called the Buy Guide. Hmm. And they were yeah. sh- they were and so that's what they do. They show things people people should check out, mm. and then they started selling out everywhere. Oh wow! And now Stanley they can't make cup, them fast they enough. They can't make them fast that's enough. That's funny. So that wasn't Stanley. Well, good for Stanley. Stanley yeah. had nothing to do with it because it, and that proves it. Yeah. Their product was about to be discontinued because yeah. they thought nobody cares about these things. And then two women <laughs> on Instagram. So Stanley should give them a bonus. I think they're so, they probably are pretty rich now. <laughs> I I so it proves that it comes down to that kind of thing. So yeah. if nobody buys this thing, or nobody buys upgrades or whatever, yeah, yeah. then 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 that means the market. I think Maybe a lot of people have purchased it. I don't know. I I have no idea. Oh. Did you buy a Kemper Profiler player? Here's a question: Did you buy it, and are you not a YouTuber? Because <laughs> I think a lot of people who make YouTube content they definitely on gear them. bottom. Yeah. Right. Let us know. Somebody yeah. uh, said brought up the fact eleven rack. Oh yeah, they Vi Vi Satchatrucci. I like it. You are probably a, an excellent. Technically proficient guitar player. Based I, on that name, I forgot about that. They did. I've had yeah. one for a while ago. Yeah, you I had, had one, one for a while. 
while ago. That was weird. a while ago. You had one for a while. Yeah, I, I had one. I got you. And uh, yeah, it came with a pack, and I yeah. I didn't think anything of it then. Well, Line Six used to do it too. With the Pod HD 500X, you could buy amp pack add-ons. And what's interesting is uh, I saw ben, it Ben either Ben Adrian or Eric. Klein, right? Eric Klein. I think it was Eric. Said that those add-on packs were like Helix Light models. So that was like right before they started going to Helix. The expansion pack amp models for the HD modeling were like Helix models that were just kind of stripped down. So okay, anyway, so this is an but interesting. But they used point. to charge you for that. This is this is something I'm gonna lay this out. We're gonna camp go back to line six up. Someone called us line six fanboys. And like I won't deny it. However, Anytime I talk about it, I, can think that. I can't. I I do say I do not think it's the best sounding unit. You said that, yeah. But I think I think like objectively speaking, nobody else. They 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 sit. This thing especially sits in a in a position that nobody else does. Like yeah. I don't. There's no. There's no comparable. I said this earlier. There's no comparable unit. Um, Light, yeah. But like the Helix is. It's like okay, so you have the FM nine. Yeah. But you could argue that the Helix, depending on how you do stuff, could probably load more stuff than the FM9 can. Slightly, yeah. Depending on how you do things. Yeah. And it's like, it depends on what's important to you. Because if you yeah. want you want that little bit edge and tone, well then, yeah, you should grab an FM9. But then if you want to grab an Axe 3, yeah, I think you're going to pay I twice think as much fractals money. fractals modeling is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to pay twice as much money to get an Axe FX3 that, that can operate live the same way yeah, Helix with an can. FC12 and a foot These are facts. These are not like... It is two times the money. Did I say three times? I, I said two You times. said twice as much, yeah. So, so somebody said you brought up like the expansion packs. We're kind of drifting from the original topic here. Kevin but, Shuck is here, by the way. Hey, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. And he asked a question that you're about to answer with Tonex. Um, <laughs> it's Tonex, Kevin. It's Tonex. Helix 2. The successor, whatever it may be called. A mm -hmm. couple things. No, we don't know anything about it. No, I wish. A, but B, just know if we do, we respect Line Six so much that we're not even gonna like nothing. You well, legally, we could never say. We could. We actually we, we have, have to sign NDAs. We have yeah. signed documents. We could be sued. Yeah. If I don't want to be. If sued we like so Yamaha. one of the no thank you <laughs> one of the last updates in Helix something got out. It did, yeah. They it was leaked a firmware a, update. They le someone leaked a firmware update. Which should not be considered anywhere near as big of a deal as yeah. a successor. And we kind of got scared about like anything. Are they like, going to They're gonna stop at the Like we were even tempted team, yeah. to not like, because like I wanted to post a video of me playing. And like I don't always, mm -hmm. like I don't always tell people what I'm using. So sometimes I was like, I'll just say it's just like a Helix patch I'm working on. Yeah. Leave it really vague. Maybe yeah. not even mention Helix. I don't know. Whatever. Before but the like, firmware, before came, the firmware out. came out, and I was kind of scared yeah. to do that, even even though I made no mention of what it was. Yeah. Anyways, we've talked about the yeah. fact that with the dynamic verbs that they've been doing. Yes. In the last dynamic handful hall, of amps. Dynamic plate. Yeah. The last handful of amps that they've created, especially the most recent firmware update. With like the like six new their own amp models like the aristocrat it sounds the, very similar to what you just said about HD five hundred with the expansion packs yeah. that were like getting set up. For, oh, are they they were Helix light? So are they? So does that mean? Does that mean? I don't know. All I'm we saying know here nothing. is connecting we know dots. Nothing. So I don't feel I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, yeah, I mean, I love Line 6. I have such a soft spot in my heart for Line 6 because I use the, the XT Live, then I use the HD500X, and then I use the, the Helix. Like, those were my live rigs for over a decade, you know, yeah. of guitar playing. So I love it. Um, all right, let's move on to Tonex. Tonex is kind of the new kid on the block. One thing, one thing I will say that has been mentioned about, okay, the Kemper profile player is is priced expensive or priced what it is because as it say here it's made in germany like it's made by kemper in germany that's not even written on here i put that on there kemper anyway this thing is made in germany and uh the tonex is kind of a competitor to the profiler player and it's a lot cheaper it's made in italy so um, neither of these two are manufactured in the 
far east, right? Right, like the 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 HX Stomp is is designed in the USA, made in China, right? So um, I don't know why I'm getting on this. These are made in Malaysia. Are you talking about the price maybe being? Yeah, yeah, right? the price being a premium. Um, you know, IK is making these in Italy, and this is priced very competitively. This thing is three hundred or four hundred. I think it's four. Um, so Kevin Shuck. Hey Kevin. Kevin's a good dude. He uh is is at Vintage King. And um Kevin asked in your opinion, Brad. Did Kevin I think he asked you specifically, right? No, he said in y'all's opinion. Oh, in y'all's opinion. You just said that I was gonna offer. Oh, you were gonna answer. Okay. What is the best modeling tech or capture tech, whatever, amp, digital amp tech, as far as feel, authenticity? Um, and Bradford, you've said this on a number of occasions, Tonex to you. Yeah. Uh, and Tonex, so Tonex does capturing. So it captures an amp. Um, I don't think you can even play an amp model in here. That's not a capture, right? That's not even available. IK makes them in their Amplitude software, but they're not available in Tonex. So anyway, Tonex does captures. We've captured many amps with Tonex. It sounds so when we capture here's the, here's the perspective we have when we capture an amp we'll set the amp up and we'll put the mics on it how we like them we run them through Bradford and I have like mirrored setups a Royer 121 uh, uh, a microphone that's like you use an SM7B I use an Earthworks SR25 but they're both sort of like an SM57 ish type of a sound that's a 7b you can mod a, like. 50, mod a 57 yeah. to basically sound like 7b and it's we run right. we run those two mics through a neve 1073 a stereo neve 1073 it's the dpx is the hardware actual hardware with a bit of eq and then we capture that and so what we'll do is we start with tone x because it takes the longest so tone x does its thing it runs its signals through the amp unless you have like Let's see, have a different computer. Some window than we do. optimized Windows yeah. machine, it's which the, we found the video out takes card. way less. It's you need Nvidia crazy. cards, yeah, which we don't have because we have Apple I'm stuff. Like, oh, we should probably look at how much one of those costs. I know it would save so much time. And then, so once it runs its signals through, it it processes the model, and that takes half an hour or so, almost for us. And so while that is processing, we then do the Kemper profile of the same amp at the exact same setting, same mic, we don't touch anything. We profile it with the Kemper and then we capture it with the Quad Cortex. Because and, Quad Cortex has to sit and think also. Yeah, so we go Tonex and then while Tonex is doing its thing, we do Kemper and Quad Cortex. Kemper takes like two minutes, not Kemper even. Kemper is fast. Quad yeah. Cortex takes like 10. Yeah. Mm, no, not quite. Not quite. Maybe, it's, maybe it, yeah, yeah. It's a little longer than Kemper, especially when by the time you refine the Kemper profile, it's probably about the same amount of time as the QC, if you consider refining. Yeah. But anyway, and then by the time we're done with the Quad Cortex, the Tone X model is pretty is close to finished. It's so close. what we end up with is a Tone X capture, a Kemper profile and a quad cortex capture of the exact same amp at the exact same settings. For the most part, they sound exactly the same on all three units, but consistently, uh, if, if I, we'd have to say which one sounds the most exactly like the actual amp, it's Tonex. Mm -hmm. Kemper's pretty much the same too, but the, the, there are some amps though that we've felt like something's not there. Yeah, but the like you have to, one. you have to do like slight adjustments on the input mm -hmm. to like balance it out. And if you crank one too much, uh, it it pushes. You're talking it too about quad hard. cortex. Yeah, but like yeah, quad cortex went off to get the gain staging right. Yeah, yeah. it's a little it's more close, finicky. but it's not often perfect. Yeah, because Tonex has like a guide telling you where to be. And that's kind yeah. of like what we we shoot for. So yeah. Tonex and Quad Cortex are very close in that regard. But yeah. I don't know. There's something. Tonex has like this little extra depth, which honestly, it could probably just be like compression. That's why it feels good, maybe. It's but whatever it, the amp is. It takes wet <laughs> effects better. Than me, so. Yeah, so we, I would say literally hundreds of times have A, B, C compared Tonex 
Kemper and Quad Cortex, all of the capturing devices that are the most popular ones. Yeah. Um, hundreds of times, because how many captures have we done? I mean, of all these amps, multiples. Well, most amps have anywhere from at least, uh, most of the time it's four to four six. To, four to ten, depending on if there's multiple channels. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if there's multiple channels, that's another thing. Yeah, and so, like, and it's not like we're doing a test every single time, but we do listen to them back to back to back. And so, um, yeah, I feel like it's pretty, it's pretty consistently Tonex. It's great. Um, now there are a couple things about this unit. It's, it's one, big. it's big. Um, it's, it's relatively easy to power though. So that's not an issue. It's big. It's one amp model, right? Or one amp capture. So it's mono in, it's stereo out. Okay. It does have, um, MIDI, so you can change things, and uh, Which, it has MIDI a few MIDI on an amp pedal. I know. What are you gonna do? Change your amp? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't see why it's. I, I it's can, convenient, but I. I don't. The I people will, who say they need it, I'm like, why? I will pose a scenario why you might want to use it for this. So, um, first of all, it has some rudimentary effects. Like it's got some. It's got a compressor in it that is light compression, and it's got reverb in it that is light reverb, and it has EQ which you can set pre or post amp. So here's how I think you'd run MIDI. Uh, you could use this as your overdrive too. It will capture drives. But what you could do is say you've got, you've got your amp, you've got a deluxe reverb and you've got two overdrive pedals that you like. Okay, so in slot A is just the capture of your deluxe reverb. In slot B is the capture of your deluxe reverb and your tube screamer in front of it. So it's like the deluxe with the tube screamer on. In slot C is the capture of the deluxe reverb with your OCD on, your distortion. So now you've got clean, tube screamer, distortion, OCD. And you run a switcher <laughs> that you want to switch between these three captures. Well, that why don't is you your game the switches staging. that are right there? <laughs> you could. <laughs> what if it's hiding under the deck of some fancy pedal board or something? <laughs> well, then the MIDI isn't even MIDI, though, at that point. The MIDI is just an extension of the controller to begin with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I just, I don't know. I Your point don't... is well made, Bradford. I'm just trying to give him a reason to put MIDI in it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think, I mean, it's it's. it's we cool. were laughing about this earlier. like what? The, Using the Tonex with MIDI, like... Uh, if you if you want to put it on your board and you're gonna change it for Sunday, I don't know. I just don't. I don't change stuff. I'll change my whole amp sound for a Sunday. Yeah. I won't change per song. Yeah. I don't. I don't. It's I don't, consistent. Like certain guitars, I think do better. Like wide range humbuckers, for example. I love using real amps with a lot of character. And to me, that's yeah. something like a Chime, like our '64 AC30, and like the Clubman. Yeah. Or. Uh, yeah, I use those two together because those have a lot of character, the amps do. Yeah. The wide range humpbuckers are a little more of a flatter like pickup. They're not super mm -hmm. like they are not like colored in a way. I don't know what I mean. If you don't know what I mean if you haven't played in a wide range humpbuckers, maybe you don't know what I mean. But like a Tron has mm -hmm. a lot of character. Yeah. Uh, a single coil like a uh, like a, a, teleca a telecaster or like a blondie the triple mm -hmm. shots they have a lot of characters so I want to use a more like flat I let one of the things do the mm -hmm. talking I can't it's I can't run the sixty four Vox and the Clubman with single coils way oh, really? too much time too it's much too much time. for me it's not it's not my preference mm -hmm. so I kind of choose it depends on my vibe it depends on the, the guitar I'm using too um, yeah but I don't change it mid set. Yeah. So it's like speaking I, of amps, we had a question in here. You get do y'all run real amps ever? Bradford, you just did. I just did. I'd like to do it more. You often, took your but... C, D, your HC thirty and your uh, third power, right? Is that what I you did. Ran? Yep. And I ran it with the aux. Mm -hmm. We don't have a space to put amps right now. Cat, mic cabs and things. I have a. I had a closet to run it just so it was yeah. out of the way, mm -hmm. which I was. I know, like some people, they'd be like, "Why would you do that?" Like, if you're not using, yeah. but I just wanted it because I didn't. I was like, I could see somebody kicking these in any of the positions. I could have put them on stage. Yeah. I was like, I didn't want to do, and it was also a lot of stuff going on, mm -hmm. and I didn't want all the lights shining. And I don't know. I just, I just felt like kind of like a look at me kind of setup. Not to yeah. say that's how. If if you do that, I don't. It's whatever. I don't yeah. blame anybody. Oh, we have a super chat, but yeah. I ran them in the back. It was awesome. 
Okay, so the super chat. Thank you, Roberto. Uh, he loves running HX Stomp with pedals. Awesome. Uh, please make presets for the H90. That's something I want to do. I'm, I'm sort of building them all out. Um, I love that thing, man. Looking forward to 2024 Tone Pass. Uh, thank you for everything you do. Thank you, uh, Roberto, right? Yeah, thank you, Roberto. 2024 Tone Pass is coming. Well, guess what? We'll have what? details about that coming soon. Yeah. We, we spent... The first amp is captured and the presets are made, and they're awesome. <laughs> I will say, Friday... We spent like three hours on the phone. Yeah, we did. I looked we, at that call. It was like the time. I was yeah. like, wow. We, we were on the spent phone for a, a while. lot of time. We were evaluating things. We were trying to figure out we how to solid bring the best value for people and offer. Yeah. So we're still only doing two tiers. Um, yeah. Funny enough, the premium was the more popular one last year. Um, we're trying to offer things. So like, for example, Tonex or your Pod Go user, mm -hmm. you're going to want to get standard mm -hmm. because... For like Pod Go, you're not able to really capitalize yeah. on some of the the, the extra dual stuff amp presets. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise we would just be giving you like two separate patches, and that's not really the point of those patches. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Would be like the Edge patch or the Brian yeah, Sig for example, two different yeah. amps and stereo. And so it's like, well, we need to offer something that's mm -hmm. so we're stripping back standard a little bit. So like, because Tonex also, if all you have is Tonex. And you're just because this has also been created because we know people have a, like a couple different things. Mm -hmm. Like some people, they have like a helix, but they also like using amps. So they, or I'm sorry, pedals. So they like have a Tonex or whatever. Yeah. So if you all you have is Tonex, and you're only going to be looking for the amp stuff, we're not not giving you amp stuff in standard. Mm -hmm. It's all amp based stuff. You will get. Yeah. It's just premium is now like any extra over the top patches. And we we and do have song patches, and we do have plans for some more like artist type patches. Like we Bradford in a video, we, we mentioned already that there's a John Mayer patch that's coming. It's based on some two rock stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, like the Brian signature patch. So there's a Bradford signature patch coming that uses two different amps in stereo. So we're gonna do more patches like that, but that'll be the premium stuff because yeah. that that kind of stuff can't be utilized by a tonex player or we a can't, go player we That's can't the, we make, don't like we don't want you to pay for something you're not going to use yeah and yeah. we can't make like six tiers <laughs> yeah we wanted to keep it simple we so we were like all right so let's offer two clear-cut yeah. options and so we'll have more we're gonna we want to wrap that up while i'm here and kind of yep. get that get that going we're not we're not releasing anything quite yet um, it'll be before the end of this month because we can't, we don't. It'll be soon. For uh, for soon. our financial situation, we can't go a month without releasing anything. <laughs> we need so. to release something. <laughs> so Tone tone Pass will happen. Yeah. And there'll be, Tone Pass, our goal is actually have something immediately available for you. Oh, we'll have something available immediately. Maybe like, we could have one it, something. Yeah, we could have at least one thing available like tomorrow if we really wanted to. Because it's done. It's It's a Morgan... It's a Morgan Plexi. It's awesome. Okay. There's only four. There's only four in the world, and we have number one of four. I I wonder if you really have one of four. That seems like some. So maybe it it's says like, it on the back. Right, but the 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 Nebula Silver Skies. Yeah. All say one of five hundred. Um, all of them say that. Well, I, so I what think... they're denoting is that you do in fact own one of only five hundred. Oh, one of one so of I, the four. I mean, that'd be awesome if you had uh, number. It could one. be number two. Yeah, yeah, it'd be I awesome if you, you have number I one. You However, I'm, I'm just going to assume I have the first you one. You can say that. Who cares? Don't, what, don't those, steal my joy. Those, other, those three other people are going to come find you and be like, no, <laughs> I have number one. Those three other people watch this YouTube channel. Let show. me know. Uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, we're, uh, we're talking about... I wanted to say one more thing, and then I go. Get, I got to go pick up the boy from school. Yeah. Uh, about Tonex, so there are a lot of people I've seen using two Tonex pedals because yeah. it will give you two amp captures in yeah. stereo. You so treat them like amps. Yeah, this and Quad Cortex definitely do this. Not all. So phase. Let's talk uh, about phase. Mm. So a lot of times people assume there are two instances of phase, like 180 or you know in or out, right? That's not actually true. Phase exists in a 360 degree uh, sphere. It's even weirder than that, though. Okay, too. so not... and you can have two amps that are not in phase or out of phase. 
So if you, they're not in like, and you really hear it, if they're panned, you won't really notice this unless you sum it to mono. And it's like, it doesn't sound right. It's because they're not in phase. You flip phase on one of them, 180 degrees, they're still not in phase. One so, may be worse sounding than the other. Rather than but... this, they're like this. So if you flip phase, now it's like this yeah. instead of this. Does that make sense? You want them here, right? So if they're out of phase, they're like this. You flip phase, they're like this. But if they exist like this, if you flip, now they're here. Okay. So uh, you we need... experienced this with utilizing the UA Aux yeah. and the Capture X. Yeah, and they, we thought it was something with those two pieces of hardware, but it's not. It's not? It has to do with the amps. Then it does it for every single amp, though. Any combination I've used, it does the same thing. Does it? Yeah. No. Oh. okay. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Well, anyway, um, what happens is in Tonex or Quad Cortex, you can really experience it. Take two different captures of different amps, and if, they're, if they don't sound right when you sum them to mono and you flip phase and they still don't sound right, that means you need to move phase in, like an 18 degree increment, if that makes sense. There is hardware and software that will allow you to do this. Little Labs makes one called the IPB. You can get a plug-in from, uh, from Universal Audio, or you can buy it as a hard piece of hardware, but you can move that phase from isn't here it like a, to here. Isn't it like a box, probably like this big? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty small. Isn't it you like just, $500? Yeah, it's 500 bucks. Just to, just to, the funny thing so, is you almost want it to be a bigger deal, but it's like, <laughs> yeah. you, well, imagine getting it and you, you take the knob, it's at noon, and so, you just got to go. So phase and is dial a... dial it an eighth of a turn. Yeah, I know. What did that suck to find out? You're like, I have this $500 piece of equipment That's to knock something in, just like eighth of a turn? Yep. Okay, well, sorry. Um, so phase is a big deal. And it's why when I run quad cortex, when I run my pedal board in quad cortex, I typically just run the same amp models, just two of them in stereo. I don't run different amps because, uh, and, and when they're panned hard left and right, you don't really hear it as much. Um, if they're completely out of phase when they're panned, you do, but if they're just slightly out of phase, not, not, not as much. So yeah. it is something that you have to consider when you run tone X or quad cortex. Now something like. Helix, I think Kemper, if you run two, if you run two profilers, I don't know about the player, but if you run two profilers in stereo, it corrects phase, does it not? Kemper built that in. I don't know. In. I've never I've I'm never pretty noticed. sure it does. I'm pretty sure it does. How does it know? I don't know. Kemper is smart. Christoph is a genius. That's how. He is smart. <laughs> I will I will say these you have to deal with phase too. Yep. Because they model them just like the amps. Well, this isn't the dream. We're not sure. Yeah, about that, but yeah. we haven't tried it. I I was at so it's a at, thing. At Nam earlier in what, what was it April twenty three, yeah. Christoph Kemper was at our Airbnb. Yeah, and I asked him and I said, <laughs> "It's your fault, Christoph. That this exists, right?" I was like, "Hey, I was wondering, <laughs> you're the there, only one. Is there a re I was the only person. My <laughs> well, idea. You're the only one to ever ask him this. <laughs> uh, is there a reason <laughs> why idea. we could we possibly see uh -huh. a pedal format of the Kemper that all it did was, yeah. and he just like." started talking about something else <laughs> he's like don't talk to me about which it. now i know because <laughs> it's means, coming means they were working on it based and on your comment he right? just like, based on my comment he was locking that way so for those of you who got one and love it you're welcome i had christoph kemper's ear s wade to answer your question yes someone has used the ox stomp in any form or fashion it's awesome it really kevin is kevin says line and ruby are in phase line and ruby are in phase that sounds like a cool kevin would know that sounds like a cool kid show Lion and Ruby. Yeah. Isn't there one called Max and Ruby, actually? Isn't that something? Maybe that's why. Yeah. Dr. Bad Lama says they do not, the Lion and the Ruby do not require phase correction. Yeah, because it's not It's not leeching. every part of the, the Ruby is it's out the with brilliant. the dream, so I wonder if maybe there are parts of it. Yes. Um, okay. Last thing, and then we're going to wrap up. Bradford, you're playing your pedal board live. What do you use? Gosh. Uh, I use QC. Mm -hmm. for a couple reasons okay uh i was using kemper before and it took a lot for me to feel like i could drop from using a big box i dra drug a big box with two rack it was kempers, a mental block huh and it was like this thing's not much bigger than an ipad mm -hmm. or like a little <laughs> mini projector like you mean to tell me i can get the same thing actually yes and more because two guitarists you can yeah. plug yeah, you can into a two quad boards cortex. Into it. it has ways you can have four inputs and four outputs. Yeah. So two guitarists can use not only that, you could actually let 
one guitarist used one signal path and mm -hmm. actually put effects on it yeah. and do stereo an amps one. with stereo effects. He could use the quad cortex, he, she, whatever, could use, there were girl guitar players, could use the quad yes, cortex there as their rig <laughs> while your buddy on the other side of the stage is using the quad cortex for stereo amps. Four with house, board. front of house yeah. can have control of both. It's insane. It actually can do that. And you mean to tell me that can replace my two Your massive huge Kemper? rack of Kempers? Yeah. And I was like, no. The I, answer is yes, it can. It Welcome can. to the future, Bradford. That's what I use now. <laughs> Setting up a rig for Tonex, I, I want to do it, and I probably yeah. will. Because you prefer the feel and the tone of it. The Tonex has a little something extra. Yeah. But it's not... We're not talking about something that's so huge that I yeah. feel like I like. I got to do it. Because mm -hmm. if it was, I would have done it. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's nice. I really like Tonex. Yeah, but quad cortex. I just like everything about it because it's easier to make adjustments to this screen. I mean, we're back to Kemper. It's worse than temp Kemper. It, the Kemper at least looks like a TI eighty three. Tonex looks like a freaking alarm clock. <laughs> it does, and you can't even see the full thing. <laughs> it looks like an alarm. Clock. So if you're trying That's to right. adjust things, that hit me. So like, so we did a video <laughs> of my rig when yeah. I when we when we played at um. The Worship Innovators Conference, mm -hmm. and all we saw was WT match. Yeah, this is a match what? And we were like, "There's a lot of match lists from WT." And I was like, "I'm not sure how to make this. I don't know how to make this scroll so we can guarantee which one is it." <laughs> you have to go. You have to switch to something else and then back. And then I was scroll. pretty sure it was the Clubman, and I I think I was. We'll just say it was enough. the Clubman. That amp rules. I'm, I was confident that enough. That amp is one of the the ones that's over here. That's a. I think that's, that's a sleeper know. for. It's so matchless. Good. I think people like it, but I, don't, I think people think the C30 is like. You know who else? You know who else loves the Clubman? A man of great culture and taste in guitar tone. One Tim Pierce. He has a Clubman right behind him. All he the does. Time. Yeah. So, um, okay, I'll answer the question. I uh, my go-to rig forever. I told you my history with Line Six earlier. I've been a Line Six player for a very long time since XT Live, all the way through Helix. Lately, for the past few years, my live rig has been Axe FX3 with an FC12. I love all-in-one modeling units. I love to have a button that says chorus, and I press it, and I got the tone from the chorus. Um, uh, user Nick Rice Film asks, when are you doing presets for Digitech RP80? Oh, we're getting right on that, Nick. Yes. Uh, Nick one, Rice Film, we'll get right on One, that. Uh, Nick Rice is going to be in charge of creating all of those presets. There you go. <laughs> Bob McClett's in charge of that. Bob, we're going to farm email, it out. Email Bob, Bob at worshiptutorials.com. Bob McClett Toneworks is going to take care of all your Digitech needs. Um, so, not to slide anyone who uses Digitech stuff. The RP80. I'm actually I think the RP80 some, is, like is like the, like the one old, that's like this The big. old one from the 90s. And it has like two foot switches on it. Yeah. I don't... Yeah. Um, I... So, I've always been an all-in-one user, whether it's Helix or Axe FX3. I, this year in 2024, I really want to make it a goal to use. I love pedals and I love the, the H90 is the thing that the tipping point, that thing is insane. I love it. And it does sounds that nothing else can do. The H90 does. So yeah. that I've experienced, I've gotten close with fractals effects. I've gotten close. Um, I'm very happy with that, but, um, the H90 uh, I built a board around it. We're going to do a video on that board soon. We, and I've got uh, the, the Gig Rig G3, and I've got the new upgrade with the LCD scribble strips, um, which I'm looking forward to. I'm going to start using that board live. I've already started programming songs and stuff with it, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, and so I've used it live a couple times already, and my go-to for that is the same as Bradford, the Quad Cortex. I like using it uh, just for amps. It's like my favorite thing to run a board into. Yeah. Uh, the second favorite thing for me, a close second, is the HX Stomp. And in fact, I will be, my goal this year is, um, Bradford and I are both starting to create more content like live on Sundays. Uh, you've seen some in-ear monitor videos from Bradford. I'm going to do some too. I attempted one yesterday on Sunday and uh, it was, it didn't work. I ended up with the video from the it's second stressful. service with the audio from the first service. And there was one fatal error that I made moving a stand around where I accidentally turned off the recording on the audio device, so I didn't get it. Anyway, it's you were that it's was, coming. Was that your, that wasn't your first time playing, but that was your first Sunday, wasn't it? That was my second Sunday there. Second Sunday, okay. At the church that I'm at, it's, Shades. It's, yeah. Sometimes I like, I'll bring my stuff, and if I don't, 
like it can it's a from, weird thing to film yourself on stage too. yeah and like i try not to be annoyed like a, like i don't want it to make it be obvious that i'm trying to do yes that i don't because, want anyone to know so it depends on what's going on at my church yeah but sometimes i go and i think like i'll get it later yeah and then i don't set it up and i'm like i'm not gonna set this up while people are already sitting in the yeah because like i sit it off the stage and it's i don't know yeah anyway so my go-to so far has been to run the quad cortex. I'm tired, so I'm talking to keep myself awake. Yeah, it's about you. You can go to bed here pretty soon. <laughs> so um, I like it because it's it's easy. It's one thing to power. It's one thing to plug into rather than two like for two tone X pedals. Um, same with the the HX stomp, but the quad cortex has another ace up its sleeve in that it is an excellent all-in-one unit. So you can run really complicated presets on it to get you all the sounds you want so if you're running your pedal board and a cable something happens and you plug in on sunday morning and you have no sound and you don't have time to check all you know 47 cables on your board uh you can just roll with quad cortex as the all-in-one you know solution so that's why i've brought it because it's a built-in backup for your whole rig yeah and i think that's very that's a valuable thing and it sounds great as as like the amps that you run your board into. Um, so you could do that with the HX Stomp. You could use it as an all-in-one too. It's just a lot more limited uh, as far as what it can do. And it's only three buttons. It's another thing. But you could totally do it. Like we have an all-in-one preset. I would just pull up our match all-in-one preset and roll it. There you go. That'd be my that'd be my go-to. So um, yeah, that's what I would do. This has been a long one. We've been on. We've been on now for an hour and a half. Not too bad, but yeah. Wow. So thank you for hanging with us. If you've been I, here, my uh, the whole time. Uh, time zone is only an hour apart, but yesterday was Sunday. You had a long day. And like I basically got, I had a set up church, lead worship, and then I basically went mm-hmm. home to get on a plane to come here. Yeah. And then I woke up at like six to go to the gym, and I was not wanting to do that, and so my body is like. Yeah. Whew. Live videos are fun. We're we're uh, we're wanting to bring them back. We're gonna do it remotely. It's not as much fun remotely. I know, it's but not. I it's we were trying to like figure this. out how to do this actual video, and I was like, well, what if we like just went live and kind of like yeah, we did it. I mean, this it totally fine. Uh, didn't get as much like of the feedback as we were probably wanting for like how to make this video, which is fine. We just wanted to go live though. Yeah. So it's been good hanging. It's been good to hang. This honestly may have more people than normal. I don't know how many. This. I feel like there are more people here. We had like 240 at one point. I don't know. What do we have for like, I mean, everybody loves gear. We got a one thumbs down. So whoever you are, I'm sorry. That's okay. You'll get over it. I'm fine. All right. I'm not offended. I've I've been over it the whole time. I didn't even know what happened. (laughs) Hey, we don't say this enough, but we could use help just with interactions and engagements and oh, sharing yeah. uh i assume live streams are interesting because who you, you don't really find out about them unless you are subscribed yeah unless we post about unless it. we schedule them and then like an email yeah or but if you by chance saw any of the various places that they were the links were shared i shared it a couple places mm-hmm. subscribe uh tell your friends that you like our content share some stuff you know write a letter put it in you the know we're, brian and i are not without mercy and are we are we not merciful? Are you, are you not entertained? That was a gladiator reference. Yeah, I, I uh, went with another one too. But if by chance Am I not we just like happen to be like, you know what, Brian? Man, just like there was like a lot of interaction on this video, mm-hmm. where like people were sharing the mess out of our content this month. We should just like give away a patch as a thank oh. you. That would probably well, happen. Bradford, that sounds like a fantastic that would, idea. That would probably happen. Well, let's pick the best one and That's, make it free. They, well, we did that with the Telstar. But Gosh, that patch is so good. Y'all sleeping on it. Someone was commenting about the Telstar I in did here, see that. and they said that it was awesome. It, it, that amp is unreal. Yes. I love that thing. And it's All right. Fun. And the patches are equally good. All right. We got to go. I got to go get Seth. I got to get the boy. Yes. The uh, boy. Bradford's going to go to bed. I'm at least going to call my wife. Yes. All right. Thank you guys for for hanging out with us. We'll see you in the next one. Later on the Bye-bye. <laughs>